Hello everyone, welcome to Gamer's Edge. My name is Mark. I am your host and Dungeon Master for tonight. Uh, welcome to episode 9 of Emancipation of Dragons, uh, where we left off with our crew last time. They had explored the below of the citadel that was sunken into the earth thousands of years ago. They found and liberated the goblins, and they managed to uh, knock out and return Dern, the leader, uh, the hobgoblin leader, uh, to the new leader up above, and had continued their search when they found a room full of books. Uh, and after some searching through one of the books, they set up a, a trap that left most people very wounded. And they decided to stop for the night and take a long rest. And that is where we left off. So I will move to the map and say hello to everyone. Why is Sean in the wrong spot? There we go. Now he's in the right spot. Huzzah. That I swear. Yeah. <laughs> Sean, evening. how are you doing? Good evening. Wonderful. Who wonderful. are you playing? I am playing Mithalus, the elven thief slash mage. Very good. Lou, good to see you. Who are you playing this evening? Hi, I'm playing Leonardo Carta, and I'm a human wizard. Very good. And Lexi, who are you playing this evening? Hello, I'm playing Autumn Oak Nevano. And she's a druid, correct? Yes. And uh, Dan, how are you, and who are you playing this evening? Hi, um, I'm Daniel, and I'll be playing Jakushu, the Yanji Monk. And hello, Matt. Hi. Ah, my name is Matt. I will be playing Quark, the Aarakocran Ranger. I think that's three weeks in a row. I've that is right. three. You know what? Have, have I got oh, one already? Oh, all right. Well, you can't have <laughs> advantage or uh, inspiration. I take it. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Jr. How are you? And who are you playing? I'm Jr. I'm playing a Azamar. Said it right. Bard. Said that right, too. <laughs> well, you're supposed to be the man with words, so no, you don't get inspiration. I'm sorry. And Eric... The character's the man with words, not JR. <laughs> I, until this point, I couldn't tell you apart, so... Oh. Eric, how are you I'm doing? Eric, I'm playing Caleb, a uh, half-elf sorcerer. So, where we had left off, uh, you guys had... Uh, Padded down for the evening. Um, I was actually going to have you guys make some rolls. Uh, is anyone keeping watch? Of course. <clears throat> okay. Who's... Yeah, I was one of the less wounded ones, so I would I would take first watch. Okay. So, Matt, uh, roll me a perception check, if you would. Perception. So it becomes very still. Everybody goes to sleep. Um, you don't hear anything. And you are kind of watching the two doors. You know, how, you tell me, how are you, how are you watching exactly? What do you do? Well, we, we did the hat, right? So everyone's in the hat. Everyone's right? in the hat, yeah. So I um, guess I'd just be... You know, sitting there's there's nowhere for me to really to perch. We've got the the table jammed under the southern door, mm -hmm. so it's really just the western door that I got to kind of keep an eye on. So I'm I'm probably just kind of I believe you jammed the thinking. chair underneath the western. Oh door. yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. So they're both jammed. So I'm probably just kind of leaning up against the the hat house, just facing kind of southwesterly. Just you know, since I have owl eyes and I can see like. 180 degrees plus. Uh, actually, everyone can see it 180 degrees plus. But anyway, that's not the point. Um, yeah, just kind of lead up against the house, just kind of look in that direction. So you you look at the, the door to the west, and as you gaze back to the door to the south, there's a giant tree with the skull of a dragon in its bow standing there, not making any noise. But he wasn't there before. I did, did I hear the sploop? That you did not. Of reappearance? I did not hear You did not. So it was rather, it's rather scary. She's standing there in the dark. 
you can tell it's a tree with a giant skull of a dragon in it. Well, usually there's a sound that accompanies that, but but welcome back, Miss Autumn. Thank you for uh, we're we're glad that the, the 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 glowy spark has returned you to us. If you uh, would like to enter, everyone is resting. We had had quite the adventure. had a, had a little mishap with a trap. Uh, leaving leaving several of us severely injured, so we're taking a bit of a rest right now. If you'd like to go on into the hat, you could continue to rest with the rest of them. I'm going to stay out here and watch. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I do not mind the company, my lady. Thank you. And um, who's taking second watch? Needless can. He's just reloading into roll 20 right now. Okay. And I'll Zex take it. What's that? Zex will take it with you. Okay. <laughs> and Needless can take third watch then. Um, so uh, both of you, if you'd give me a perception check. Okay. Do... 14. Uh, 13. Okay. Um, yeah, the the time passes uneventfully. Um, is there anything that either of you want to do before watch is over? No. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, Mithilis, are you back in yet? If you are, make me a perception check for your watch. I am not back. Am I muted? No, you're not muted. Okay. No, I'm not. I'm not back in yet. Okay. I'm reloading again. No problem. You usually have to reload twice. Uh, only if you empty. Number four. <laughs> uh, just you don't happen to have a D twenty, do you? Uh, I do. Just roll me a D twenty. Sixteen. Oh, and you're no longer on headset. Uh, yeah, your your watch passes uneventful as well. Um, everyone wakes up refreshed. Uh, you have have had the effects of a full rest, so make sure you do mark your sheets accordingly. If you had were down spell slots or anything, HP, etc. And the day is yours. What's the plan? Anything you want to do? Good well, berries? If I Say it into the thing. Good berries? So can you explain what you're doing to for everybody else? Mm -hmm. Love can do it. Um, getting good berries. Yeah. So basically, she she takes some mistletoe and grinds it up in her hand, and uh, she has berries in them instead. And roll me. Uh, uh, does it say how many on there? The ten berries. Okay. So roll me a d10. That's the. Oh, you might not have one out. Um, just roll me a d20. Seven? Seven. Okay, so you have seven good berries. Okay. Are you going to give those to people or hold on to them? What do you want to do with them? Hold on. To you hold on to them? Okay. Very good. Uh, anyone else have, what would you guys like to do? <coughs> See it. Maybe uh, time to go find this wizard. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Start heading out. So what's the what's the order? Going to be there. I'll be second. Uh, was it south? It was south to go to the next area, right? 
Yeah, we came from the uh, yeah, it's Yeah, it's south to go to the next area. You are correct. So let me remove that door. There we go. And put the torch here, put that there. And why don't you guys uh, give me a marching order? I'll, I'll be covering the, the rear. Is that going to be at your Nicholas? Okay. I'm going to move you forward just a little oh, bit. Oh, yes. This is where we are. And I know you said rear quark. You bring up the rear. Uh, Caleb, where are you going to be? Any Tali, where are you going to be? Oh, I said I was going to be second. So let's see. Yeah, that works. Okay. Uh, Caleb? Uh, right there. And Leo, do you want to be next to Caleb or next to Quark? Or? I'll stick with Quark. Okay. So you're there. I should probably sneak ahead and find these enemies again. Enemies? <laughs> yeah, there's goblins down here. There's also uh, the shrubs. Oh, that's right. The thistle downs or whatever they're called. So give me one second, guys. Let me go ahead and see if I know how to sneak still. It's like you know how to sneak. Okay. Uh, Daniel, do you remember the command to blind roll? Oh, you know what? I can do it this way. I did it slash G and roll. Okay, thank you. That's for us too, by the way. If you if you want us to roll something during the GC, got it. We don't see. Thank you, thank you. That was totally it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Show me where you're gonna go, Mithlas. Are you going there. to there? Yep, I moved to there already. All right. I see or hear any of these things at all? Make me a perception check. Um, you don't see anything or hear anything in the area. Uh, keep moving south. Okay. So, still nobody around, huh? Not that you're seeing. All right, I'll, I'll head back and say, thus far, it seems clear. move ahead i don't i don't see the enemies that were here last night so i don't know where they are or if i was just imagining things but i do remember that there were at least three of them oh move ahead cautiously okay so we'll move ahead as a group um if you want i can stay in i can stay in stealth and go ahead a little bit at least to see if the I'm just going to move you guys down to here so that I can move the stream and the table. Are these pillars in here? Uh, so basically what you see as you get a little bit further there is... Um, stand by There's a lot of pale, spindly briars pressing close, casting twisted shadows on the earth floor in the violet light. And you see uh, the beginnings or crumblings of walls that stand about 20 foot tall. Mm. Okay, that's what those are. Uh, I where, still don't see any enemies. Where did you go? Uh, south, another. Uh, south you and a little bit west. Do not at the moment. Make me a perception check. Uh, 
You said perception check, right? Mm-hmm. I did. That's what you see at the moment. Awesome. I'm going to sneak my butt right back out. Uh, okay, how are you doing that? Show, show me, like, go uh, square by square if you would. Absolutely. Am I in the bushes here? And I'm behind this wall. Okay. Yeah. I'm behind that wall. Okay. Heading east, and then I'm gonna diagonal up to. Uh, okay, go. I still can't think. Go to two more squares. So it's at this point you notice they're all their heads all turned to watch you. Are those skeletons or the bushes? Uh, they're. You think they're the twig blights, but they are just watching you. Uh, as long as they don't attack, I'm going to keep on uh, moseying away. <laughs> okay. And just FYI, stand by. So there's at least one, two, three, four, five. At least five. Okay. Probably six. Yep, keep on moving. There's six. Yep, you can move all the way back. Yep, keep on. All right. Um, Oddly enough, what seems to be twig lights saw me, which I didn't think would have been possible, but uh, they just watched me move through. They didn't attack, they didn't move. They just watched me, right? All Mm -hmm. they did was stare? Yep, all they did was stare. Um... So I don't know. Maybe we don't have to fight them. Or they just didn't see me as a threat. Or they didn't see me. I know. They saw me. So I don't know. Up to you guys. You mean those bush things saw you? They appeared to. And they didn't see you as a threat? Uh, If they thought I was a threat, then they didn't think I was a big enough one to worry about. He was still pretty far away. I never thought I'd hear that about a bush. Yeah, these bushes don't seem to be that angry. Uh, most bushes I've met have not been angry. That tends to be the thing, but you know, we've we've met some angry bush. Yeah, I, you know, I guess this is a really strange adventure, but it's what I signed up for. Angry bushes and... <laughs> Angry bushes and hobgoblins? Pretty much. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I don't know how you guys want to proceed. I am happy to go scout the way, but I will tell you there are at least six of them down there that I could see. Is there any alternate path that you could discern whatsoever? <laughs> I didn't see any alternate paths. Most of those, it's mostly like that rough wall. And it just goes into small little alcoves. They never, they don't go anywhere. At least, not that I saw yet. But there's definitely a lot more to the south. A lot more room. Way to go. Can the tree lady talk to them? Maybe talk them down? That would be outside of my purview of knowledge. Do you remember what you wrote down earlier today? You should say that in the mic. I can speak to plants and animals. There we go. Can you, like, speak to them and see why they're not scared of him? I can give it a try. Or see. 
<laughs> would yeah, that too. Not being afraid of me, see if they have, if they're going to attack, if they've ordered or. You can try. Conversation with the so, how are you guys doing this? Are you all going as a group with her, or are you sending I'll her? I'll go with her. Alone? <laughs> I'll think, go with her. What does the uh, landscape look like approaching it? Is it a wide area where I could stay very far back? Yeah, I mean, so it's it's uh, it's kind of what you see here to the south. It looks kind of like an open open grove of kinds. There are walls and stuff to prevent line of sight, but it does look like it opens up into a pretty big area. I'll move forward, but just enough to keep a line of sight on Could you want to point generally where... As they move forward, oh, I'm just going okay. to keep them in sight. It got it, got it. Okay. So I want to give them a good berry a piece. Oh, okay. Before we go. So Autumn gives each of you a good berry. Nom nom. Uh, this is, if you're not familiar with good berries, they will fill you up for the day, but they will also give you one HP. A uh, temporary hit point? No. One actual hit point. So, I will be good GM and remind you guys, you don't have a medic. But if somebody smashes one of these into your mouth, it will restore one HP, which could be the difference between life and death in a certain situation. I'm going to hold it in my pocket with all of my glowing mushrooms. Yep. (laughs) You know you'll never find it if you put it in that pocket. It's it's now, gone in that pocket. Okay. Now it's a poison berry. <laughs> <laughs> a glowing poison berry. <laughs> okay, so uh in that case it's Autumn and Itali. And Leo yep. is trailing keeping them in line of sight. I'm gonna put I'll you I'll go forward head. with them too. Okay. Is everybody going? Or I was no. just gonna go hide behind a tree. Okay, so Caleb is not Zach, Zach, about- is. Zach, Zach is. Okay. So I'm going to... But I'll stay about 10 feet behind. Okay. This is their yeah, show. Stay, stay spread out just just, just in case they, they didn't perceive him as a threat because he was by himself. If we stay spread out, perhaps we won't trigger a response. Okay. Guys, it's six bushes versus a tree. We'll be fine. Yeah, I thought that about giant rats, too. Apparently, I was mistaken. <laughs> and the spark follows as well. And as does the torch. Okay. To here. Okay. So when you get to about here, you can see that there is a twig blight off to your west. Off to the southwest. Let me make sure that the uh, stream can see this too. Here, there we go. All right, and you are going to go and try and talk to it, Autumn. Okay. So, and Italia goes with you. It watches the two of you walk up. It is not moving except for its head. And Zach, where do you want to be? for this um, about the same about 10 feet behind about 10 feet behind so about there yeah okay all right when you attempt to talk to it all right so autumn you move up there uh, you have heard what it sounds like when you try and communicate with it what do you tell the group at this point? It sounds like alien noises. It sounds like what? It sounds like like alien noises. So you can't understand them? No, I cannot. Did it sound like it was expressing any type of emotion in the inflection? Maybe a hostility or a timid nature to the sound? No, it wasn't hostile. It was, um, and it wasn't like, they weren't, it was just, hmm, it was, 
kind of hard to ex explain. It wasn't like high pitched or low pitched. It was just a lot of noise. And it sounded more like alien. Mm. Well, if uh, it doesn't seem to be hostile, I say that maybe perhaps we can move past it for the time being. As, are the other ones in line of sight or nearby, Mithilus? Uh, Mithilus, from where Mithilus is, he can see just the one at the moment, I believe. But that he went ahead and one scouted one a number of others. Here, and one down there. So what I would like for you guys to do is maybe I can stand in front of one and then you guys go by and then maybe I can stand in front of the other one and you guys go by and maybe we can do it that way. If it seems to work, I'm... Let's try it that way and see what happens. Okay. It's not self-evident I'm casting Mage Armor. Okay. Fine. So, um, yeah. And does everyone have a good berry? Do I have enough for everyone? Yeah, you did. You okay. had enough for everyone. Okay. I move in front of this one. Does anything happen? They just, their heads swivel and watch you. Cool. I'll whisper, I am Mitali. I speak for the trees. <laughs> no response. Okay. Nothing. Cool. Thank you, Fern Gully. <laughs> uh, Le Leo, you are by far and away the farthest one back at this point. Where do you want to be? As long as I am within 180 feet of whoever is furthest ahead. Okay. End line of sight, then I'm I'm happy. But I'll just keep bringing up the rear, probably with whoever is the furthest it, back. It looks like point. Caleb at this point. Yeah, so Caleb and I, will, I'll just try to hustle up and catch up to Caleb as he moves forward. Okay. I... I might have missed it originally. What are they doing? Are they farming? They are not doing anything right now. They are, are they... standing there watching you. Are They're they planted? Like bushes. Are they are they planted? It's hard to tell because they are they kind of look like bushes that are planted every time you've seen them anyways, unless they're moving. But you would guess no, but you're not 100% positive. As people start moving forward, I'm going to put an arm up and say, hey guys, hold on a second, I got an idea. And I'm actually going to put an alarm, like I'm going to take out some string and put it across from here to here in front of this twig blight, like the first one. That's so I'm, I'm making right sure I'm pinging on the map right now from here oh. to here. I can't see. Oh, sorry. From here to here. Oh, if I wish I could do that. No, essentially to uh, because the the space is so limited for which I can do alarm. You mm -hmm. can only do it across. I think it's um, twenty feet. So I'm just going to do it across the alcove that the twig blight is in to give me an indication that if that one twig blight moves out, then then I'll be aware that the twig blights have moved. That so is if not we, that one. Uh, that would be the first one. Why you're not seeing that ping? That's weird. Okay, so I I will do you one better. Uh, you get out the alarm to do that as you and Caleb make your way up, and as you get to about here, the twig bite starts to move with you. Uh, guys, guys, <laughs> what's up? They are they uh, like moving it's... menacingly? Just. Kind of skittering near Leo. And as Caleb gets to here, this one skitters around the wall, and the one up there skitters towards right. Caleb as well. I'm going to pull out a mushroom and like kind of dangle it a little bit and see if it catches its attention, waving it back and forth and see <laughs> if it follows the glow. Um, <laughs> it, it does not. It just seems to be focused on you, actually. I'm going to take it, and then I'm going to just, like, staring it down 
and I'm just going to toss it to the side and then immediately try to duck like a square down and see how it responds to that, but not in like a super rapid manner. Just like, look at that, I'm moving. Yeah, and as you go down a side, it watches you and it moves down five feet as well. Seems to be kind of keeping pace to pace with you. And it's just nothing for the mushroom. No, nothing for the mushroom. Okay. Are we are we doing something about this? Do we feel like it's going to be a danger? Could be a danger later on, but so far, I'm telling you, the wizard feels threatened by this. I'm sorry. Say that one more time. I I'm definitely sure the wizard feels threatened by this. I definitely feel threatened by this. I'm just like pulling out my spell book right now and I'm just like looking through it. Like, is there anything I can do? Is there anything I can do? I'm just holding it. Okay. Just kind of freaking out a little bit. All right. And what what caused it to follow you again? I, I tried to set up an alarm in front of it to see if it would move if we left and uh, it just started following me. But I didn't it even get... to know that all of us have moved forward and it's coming with the group. Have the others moved? Not yes. yet. Oh, well, I mean, the ones by Caleb did. But just the, the three of them so far. The one by Leo and the two by Caleb. Well, we're being followed by a fiery orb and now bushes, so I guess we can continue just like normal. How, how many of them do we see? Uh, you should see what you currently see. Um, hey, you guys, how many of these do you I, see? I currently count eight. There's eight that's following us? No, all around. Okay. There's the three back there, the one by you. It's four, five, six, seven. Where'd that other one go? No, I saw it just a second ago. One, two. I wandered away. Oh, man. One, two, three, four, five. There's at least Six, seven. seven. Yeah, so, there's at least seven. How many do we feel like there's a threat to us? Well, seven could give us some trouble, especially in close quarters. Well, let's let's I say we push forward. Okay. Leo in front of me. Don't get to tell me twice. There's an eighth. I'm, I'm going to be super, super close now. Okay. And then how? what about the two mages? Are you guys closing in or are you staying far back or what's the... I'm just going to scuttle along in front of Caleb, wherever he's going. I'm going to try to just be five feet in front of him. Five feet in front of him? Okay. And as yeah. you do, as you do, uh, more of them begin to come out from behind walls. And they seem to be... They're not closing, but they are... Uh, hold on, I got one on the map background. Token layer. There we go. Um, they're they're just kind of keeping pace with you. Yeah, I will. Okay. As I, as I get to here, I, I definitely see an opening, and I see something through it. What do I see through it? Stand by. Do they seem to be attracted? I'm I'm going to talk to Caleb while you do that. Okay. Um, do you think that they're attracted to perhaps arcane energy? They really seem to be following us rather than anybody else. I think they're closing awesome. up behind us. And it's also very possible they're they're not here to keep us from going deeper, they're here to keep us from coming back out. It's a possibility too. I need to know where you guys want to be. I, I will give you one more opportunity to move before I answer Quark's question. Because right now you guys are pretty far away from the group. 
Yeah, it's closed in. Okay. To here? Farther back? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, Jeez. that's fine. Let's try and get you to about there. And then get the stream. Actually, I should move the torch and the Okay. Actually, let me move. Ah, where'd you go, Quark? Oh, there you are. (laughs) You guys are on... Ah, You guys are on a weird place. I can't... let Let me just get rid of some of this. Hold on one second. And it's your dynamic lighting. It is my, it is my dynamic lighting. That's why I'm getting rid of it. Okay. Okay. So you get to about here, and what you see is the following. Um, there's a walled clearing just to the south of, well, Zakusu and Itali are into it. Um, but the rest of you are, it's just to the south. Uh, there's a wall clearing among the briars. The walls are about 20 feet high, as I mentioned before, which is less than half of the height of the cavern ceiling. Several varieties of plants grow around, around the perimeter of the clearing, including a few suspicious looking sa- saplings, but their importance be pales before that, which stands at the courtyard center beneath the fungal light grows a jagged tree and its blackened, twisted limbs reach upward like a skeletal hand clawing its way out of the earth. Before it stands a few twig blights, a heavily armored young human male with a shield and sword, a blonde young human woman in a robe fit for a noble, and a middle-aged bearded human male wearing a hooded brown robe and armed with a staff and sickle. The younger humans, you don't need to uh, roll for this, you'll notice that they have black eyes and gray skin with a texture of bark. And this is what you see. I know you can't see it yet. Hold on. Should have appeared on your map. So that is the tree behind and the three people gathered. That is pretty awesome artwork. Is and I need Zach and Itali to roll perception checks for me, please. Uh, perception cool. 20. 20 total. Okay, thank you. Okay, 18. great. Stand by one, both of you. Okay, Zach, you have your message, and uh, Itali, you'll have yours momentarily. As to what? That was about. Okay. okay, you have yours. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you, you'll get the point when you read it, Jr. Hey, Mark. Yes. When you use that adjective, are you using that as a specific adjective, the size adjective? Yeah. Yes. Like, as big as me. Yes. Okay. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> um, okay, and I need to close that on the stream and close it on the table so that it's not in the way for everybody. And uh, let's do this. So at this point, 
Oh, that's why I can't see anything. I'm on the stream. Hold on one second. Are we frozen in time? We are for the for this exact moment, yes. Okay. Please tell me as soon as we are not. We are not starting now. Uh, the, the robed figure says, Halt, you do not know what you do. We haven't done anything yet. What are we doing? You are intending to come here and fight me, fight my thralls. <coughs> Am I wrong? You are, you well, are you no. exactly? Because we oppose the enslavement of free beings. During this conversation, I'm going to try to move up into the circular courtyard that's in the center here. And looking at the other two that are with him, because it's the one, it's the older male that's speaking. Right? Yes. Would I be able to tell, based on like arcane knowledge or anything of that nature, if it looks like they have been enthralled by him, or if it looks like they have been perhaps enthralled by like the tree, for example, would I be able to discern? Uh, make me an arcana check. You see the frog? Bad roll. Nine. That was too Italian. Do I see it? I know it's trying to blend in. Um, hard for you to tell. But it looks like they are being like magically controlled. Perhaps am I am I yes. even able to tell that? Yes. But it wasn't okay. Yes. Um. He looks at uh, you. Wait, how did you guys get switched again? Oh, because we... (laughs) Sorry. I just realized you guys are in the wrong spots. Hold on. Uh, Dan and Eric need to trade places. Nope. Eric and Matt need to trade places. Eric and JR need to trade places. Yeah, now we're guys. Apparently all the problems. You are all the problems. Man. Um, he, he looks at, uh, which one of you said, who are you? That was me. Okay. So he looks at you, Jay, uh, 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 Itali, and he says, I am Belek called the outcast. My circle expelled me the fools. Why? Because I dared to expand nature's reach in many ways they couldn't grasp. I found what I sought in the Golthias tree. And he looks to you, Autumn. He says, you would understand. And I just peek my head around. Hi, uh, I'm Leo. By the way, um, did you figure out how to do the thing to the tree to make it do the fruit? Or did you stumble upon it and then cultivate it? Uh, the tree, it's beautiful, No. Oh, yes, very much so. It lives, though it looks dead. In an age long past, someone staked a vampire on this very spot. The stake mm-hmm. took root, and so grew the Gothias tree, reverberating with primal power who, for those who can tap it. And as for your question about the fruit, I give fruit to the goblins with orders to disperse their seeds on the surface. Deceitful beings they are, the goblins barter the fruit, but the seeds are dispersed all the same. My plan for colonizing the surface with the children of Gothias continues. And what what do you accomplish with the spread of the seeds on the surface? Is it that there will be more of these trees to grow more fruit, or does the tree have some type of other otherworldly pull to it? Well, you've seen my children, and he he points or he motions to the uh, twig blights behind him and they actually start to move forward. An entire world controlled by me at my disposal. Were these twig blights ever once sentient? No. No, they exist only to follow my command. 
And so these yeah. are children of the tree. Indeed. I, t- I can appreciate the banter. Um, I was going to let you walk away uh, with just giving us the kids and some fruit, but um, you're killing people upstairs just to spread your kids. You could have done that down here and kept everything hidden and kept everything to yourself. I don't want it to be by myself. It's about changing the world. Nature needs to reclaim this planet. Nature has reclaimed this planet. The problem is what you're doing is not nature. A point of view. A common point of view. Anything to do with the undead is the definition of unnatural. I do not wish to engage in combat, but I must insist on you freeing your two thralls and allowing us to leave this chamber. (laughs) They were the first supplicants. The Golthias tree has accepted them. They are mine to control, just like the twig blights. You cannot save them. And we're not going to try. Roll initiative. (laughs) <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. That is why I love Zek. Right there. And Zek, so that there's no confusion, is going to yell, Take the young ones alive. Pretty sure they're dead. That's fine. Yeah. He's still going to yell it. Uh, let me. There's been confusion in the past. <laughs> <laughs> No idea what you're talking about. Caleb, I'm going to move you and uh, just for one second so that I can get initiative for all these twig blights. So hold on one second. Okay. Ah, no, not what I want to do. There. There. Grouping it. There we go. And then I'm going to move you back. I I think you were there. Move move it wherever you were. I, I'm sorry if I didn't put it in the right spot. It's fine. Uh, I'm not concerned. Let's see, I think I got all those. And then I need to get these guys. And also, we're level two. You are level two. You are indeed level two. Let's point that out. I'm pretty sure we should be level three by now, but. Don't worry, the two that survive will be. Yep. <laughs> not encouraging Zek. <laughs> with with Zek's history of taking damage, he's pretty sure it's not him. <laughs> yeah, it's not me. Look where I am. It's not me. Remember your good berries. Fair point. Thank you. Okay. Good stuff. Don't die. Now, stand by one second here, because I bought all these stupid, uh, I mean, all these awesome figures. We're going to use them. Uh, we should recenter this a little bit because a lot of this fight's not actually going to take place in this room. It should be like at the very bottom here, I think. Yeah, I like that because a lot of that fight's going to be going on. Over. Yep, indeed. Uh, this is Belak. By the way, these look great. I don't know if it's going to focus on stream or not. Hmm. And I actually turn turn the uh, the mini cam off because I have other things I need to do with it, and that's going to be Sir Sir Bradford. I have twig lights and twig light adjacent minis. That's awesome. I'll try and Oh, 
Oh. And you guys are officially in battle now, huh? Guys, I finally figured out the baseline in Final Fantasy 2. <laughs> oh, it's so much better than that. <laughs> I think this is my favorite battle music of all time, right here. Let me know when you are good. Everything I can All see. All right, we are set up. So, <clears throat> with a 22. Oh, I didn't call oh. my initiative 18. <laughs> yeah, that's important. Um, oh, Autumn, you didn't tell me your initiative either, actually. 21. 21? Hey, that's actually what you already, that's what the computer rolled you to, so oh. I guess you're consistent. Uh, let's see, where are you? There you are. So now you're in the initiative tracker. I just have to find you. Leonardo, what did you roll? 21? 18. 18. Okay. Perfect. Redistribute that. Sending. Okay. Mithilus, you're the first one to act. Yeah, shortbow uh, against the twig light closest to automobile. Okay, uh, this one right here? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Nineteen. Uh, Nineteen will definitely hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. Eight plus... Thirteen. Your bolt... Uh, shoots into the base of the twig blight and splits it down the middle and it stops moving dead. Bang. Nice. Damn. Biggity bam. Any movement or staying there? Uh, I just want to try to stealth over a little bit uh, west here behind this bush. Okay. Okay. You feel... Sorry, still on advantage. My bad. That's all right. The first roll was a 19. Yeah. Yep. And you feel pretty confident that maybe they aren't seeing you. Of course, they saw you before, so you're not sure. All right. Autumn. Um, frostbite. Okay. On, on which one? The one right there. Right okay. in front of me. Uh... So the one that was right next to you is is, is dead. Is dead. Okay. Yeah. So you have two to the north of you, uh, one in the north of Caleb, or one to the east of Caleb, or one. Oh, are you talking about the ones uh, straight to the left of you? The one straight to the okay. left. Okay. So go ahead and uh, is it a saving throw on his part? Can you look on the card? Tell me, or are you rolling to hit? I can't remember which. Um, I'm rolling to hit. Okay. So go ahead and roll to hit. Is that a D20? Yep, D20 plus your spell modifier. Ten. Okay, and let me look at one thing. Okay, let me see your... Okay. So it needs to make a con saving throw. I think your your number is 13 or 14 if I remember right. Check. Con save. It actually does save. So you attempt to freeze it and it manages to skitter out of the way. Do you want to move or stay there? I gotta not you do that for the TV. 
Uh, do you want to move or stay there? I will stay there. Okay. And next up is this twig light. It moves just within reach of Caleb. And it's going to attempt to hit him with his claws. I think a 21 hits. So Caleb, as you were focusing on what lied ahead, uh, the twig blight ran up and slashed you in the back for five points of piercing damage. And next up is this twig blight. It's going to move. Actually, I need to check. Uh, you rolled a 19, right? On the your stealth? stealth? Yeah. Nope. It does not see you. Runs up to Quark. Does a 15 hit you, Quark? Negative. Okay. So you're able to dodge out of the way of the swipe. That one just doesn't, can't make it to you. So another one closes in towards Caleb. Six. This one is just able to make it. Cool, sir. Does a 16 hit? Yes. Uh, so it also runs up and slashes your leg for three piercing damage. Right. Leo. I'm going to shout out Itali. I got an idea. Back me up here. And I'm going to turn around and I'm going to cast Sleep right between Caleb and Autumn Oak. Just on that square there, with the intent of hitting as many of the twig blights as possible. I'm figuring I should hit at least four to five with that. If okay. not six, I'm, not that I'm going to get that many hit points on sleep, but... Goal is there. 20 foot radius. So definitely yep. those three. The idea, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. I don't know if you're going to count that or not. Because it's... Um, isn't it of your choice? I thought it was all creatures. Sends creatures, roll 5d8. The total is how many hit points of creatures this spell can affect creatures within 20 feet of a point you choose within range or affected in ascending order of their current hit points. Right, so that would include them as well. Uh, so you probably don't want to do that exactly. No, I'm not going to do that. I misunderstood how the spell hit. What's the range on it, though? It's a uh, 20 foot radius. But. Right, They're going to have the most. But what's the range that you can throw it out? Cause uh, 90. 90? So you could do it above to get all of the... Yeah, I could cast it further north right. to, to hit the uh, the three twig blades up there. Uh, and that's what my goal is going to be, I Okay. Think. So uh, go ahead and roll your 5d8. Six. And nine is 15. And... Four is 19. 19. Okay. Uh, roll me a die six, please. But remember 19. Two. Two, okay. Stand by. I gotta, I gotta do all of this. Hold on one second. Um, good. So, Caleb, the three that are near you just kind of collapse on the ground. The one to the north of you collapses as well, but you hear skittering to the northwest still. 
So I successfully slept the three that are immediately you, in front You of actually them. got four. Four of oh, them. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to command as my bonus action uh, Tika to move forward to I've got 50 feet, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. I'm just going to put Tika over here. Like me, Thelos? Uh, yeah, kind of moving in that direction as much as is possible. Perfect. Okay. And then if there's any location where I see that I think that I could take ranged cover from Bellic or this group here, I'm going to move to that. So if that means like to the side of a tally here, I don't know how crumbled this wall is. Um, it's, it's actually exactly what you see there. It's mostly intact. Mm. Uh, and I'm putting Tika over here. Is that about right? Yeah, that'll do fine. Okay. Um, it's, it's pretty much exactly what you see. It's mostly intact, actually. Um, it, the, the large portion that is circular and then goes straight, that's fully intact. Um, the part that you are currently up against is mostly there. The other two pieces are kind of half there. I'm going to move to get my back onto this wall. Oh, sorry. Yep. And then okay. at that point, I'll discover that the other, the other toy blight is actually up there. Not realizing that I just exposed myself to it. Got it. Okay. Anything else for you? I think that's everything. That's everything. Caleb, you're up. All right. Um, I am going to move back. So... Those are the ones that are out, or so the three to the north of you are all asleep. Okay. In fact, the fourth one that's off the screen there, a ways, is also asleep. The one to your northeast okay. is not. All right. And yeah, those are the only four that you see to be asleep, kind of all in the north corridor by you. Right. Okay. Here there. I am going to firebolt the one to my to the northeast. Okay. A 13 just hits. And as you uh, shoot it, it it uh, it screams a horrifying alien kind of high pitched scream. Yes. But it is still moving at this point. Mm-hmm. Anything else, Caleb? I've done with it. Um, how are we looking right now? Is anybody else? Am I the most hurt out of? <laughs> you are. Yes. Okay. Then uh, no, I'm good. Okay. Uh, this twig blight. Uh, there, there's a twig blight to the north that skitters southward. And uh, takes a swing at Autumn. Ooh, 17, I believe, does hit you for five piercing damage. Lexi. Yes. So a twig blight runs up and swipes you in the leg and you take five piercing damage. Okay. So keep track that you're at you're down five hit points. Okay. And then next, give me one moment, please. Okay. Um, she moves forward in front of Belek. Any 
and she extends her arm and the same kind of glittery essence that you saw Leo cast actually heads towards a good chunk of you. So starting with Tally and moving upward, or sorry, 5, 5, 10, 15, 20. So starting here, that's going to get everyone, including those twig bites. All right, so uh, roll 5d8. Come on, 5. 20 is not that great. Um, who has the highest number of hit points? Uh, actual hit points or including temporary? Actual hit points. I'm 12. 19. 20. Uh, 15. Currently 10. Okay. Uh, Autumn, how many hit points do you have? Uh, it'd be on your sheet. It's called HP. Uh, top right underneath where the initiative bonus is. It's just a HP. You may even see hit points maximum. 18. And then she's lost five, which brings her to 13. So it's going to hit Quark and. Yep. So Quark, uh, you feel yourself suddenly get very sleepy and everything fades to black. Don't. Or, and <laughs> yeah, Autumn, you see Cork just kind of go silly putty and, and fall to the ground. Feathers flapping everywhere. Oh, uh, yep, nope. So that works. So, go ahead. You got a question? No. Well, can I go do something? Not yet. Not till it's your turn. All right. Uh, one passes. Quark, you are asleep, so you cannot do anything. Uh, that twig blade is asleep, so it cannot do anything. Zach. Zeph is going to move here. Okay. And uh, Sab with a spear. At? Uh, Belek. Okay. For a 22. I'm pretty sure that hits. It does. I hope so. If it's higher than 22, we may have issues. I think you may have issues already. <laughs> 10 points of damage. Nice. Solid. Yeah, so you stab him and it, it takes purchase. Uh, and then martial arts. I will use my bonus action to elbow him with as the spear is kind of coming across. Okay. 9 plus 7 for a 16. How that hits. No biting. That's it. Uh, two plus five to seven. Seven points of damage. Yeah, you hear a, a crunch from the side of his head as you. Uh, he uh, blood trickles from his nose, but he's still standing. Release them. <laughs> he says nothing. Yeah, that's me. Okay. Uh, at that point, the giant frog jumps down out of the tree and. There's a giant frog. There is a giant frog. Shenanigans. And it. I think, I think it's a hypno toad. I don't think it is. <laughs> All hail the Hypnotoad. It is going to attempt to bite you. Zach? Does an 18 hit? 
So it chomps into your leg, or sorry, chomps into your snake body and grapples you. Wow, there's no opposed roll or anything. Nope. Hmm. Itali. All right. I am going to cast sleep on the lady that casts sleep. Okay, so that's a 20-foot radius. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to see if you can even... Like, each square is five feet, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you cast it on her, she'll probably be the you know, one of the first ones affected because she probably has more HP than most of the other people. But I would put it a little bit north of her so that you don't get Zek. Yep, I'll do just that. Okay. And let's see. So I got to roll how many dice? 5d8, I believe. 5d8. Roll high. Come on. That's not high. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, it it does actually start to purchase around her, but then she seems to shrug it off. It would, uh, if he's casting sleep, it would hit the twig blades here, right? It, or does it, it does would, it have to hit it the highest first? It has to hit first? the highest first and then go from there. Got it. Yep. Gotcha. All right. Well. Are you going to move gonna... or stay there? I'm going to try to do exactly what Leo did and try command as well. Oh, no, no, no. He was commanding his his familiar. Oh, familiar. Yeah, you can't do two two spells in one turn. Then in that case, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to start moving into battle. Yeah. And that'll be my turn. I'm going to send you a note. Okay. Yeah, that's all for me. Okay. Sorry, I just thought it might be easier to see more of them. More of the map that way. Oh, you're sending me that way? Okay. Oh, is it? You sure? It's starting with creatures that have the lowest current hit points. Each creature affected by the spell. Okay. Well, okay. 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 <clears throat> so let's back up for a moment. Yeah. First of all, uh, Matt, you did not fall asleep. I should have caught that burn first. Yep. Sorry. sorry. I was do- reading it backwards. Uh, Matt, you did not fall asleep, and I will let you take your turn in a moment. Uh, this twig blade. Order of yeah, it's ascending. And I was reading descending. Okay. I didn't catch it either, and I just used it. So that one is also asleep because of what she did, and then it would not have affected Quark. Uh, okay, so this twig blight would be asleep. He rolled 16. Oh, just missed. If you'd have had two more points, you would have actually put Belek to sleep. Oof. Okay. Uh, okay. So, since that was the case, Quark, it's your turn, retroactively. Retroactive turn engage. However, um, however, asleep. just FYI, the twig blight just to the south of you is asleep. So okay, it is. So that twig not blight a is asleep now. Okay. Um, in that case, what I am going to do, or what Quark, excuse me, is going to do, is he is going to shimmy over here and take five to Hunter's Mark on that guy right there. That's Twig Blight, right? 
I can't hear you, Mark. It's on purpose. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, we were we were discussing something on this table. Sorry. But, yeah, that's fine. So this twig blight here, Hunter's Mark. Is it, okay. That that one's asleep too, right? It is asleep also. Oh, that one's asleep too. Oh, yeah. All the twig blights basically down here are asleep now. All the twig blights are asleep. Copy that. The, oh, the only by. ones. Uh, there's only two of them, and the ones to the north of Autumn, and ones to the northeast of Twig of uh, Caleb. Those are the only ones still uh, awake right now. Okay, I was zoomed out too far to see the whole battlefield, and I couldn't tell that they were tipped sideways. Um. All right. In that case, uh, I do not like the look of this guy's jib. So that hypnotoad is going to get the, uh, the hunter's, hunter's mark. mark. Okay. And he will also feel the sting of my arrow. Aim for the eyeballs. I'm assuming a 20 hits. A 20 should hit. Give me just one second. Okay, there we go. Hunter's Mark. Uh, frog. Oh, I can't get to the frog. Hold on. Uh, a 20 does hit, yes. All right. So regular damage plus D5, D6, excuse me. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Seven, okay. Uh, you you do, you kind of get it into its... It's one. Of, it's one of its back haunches. Uh, the arrow sticks in, but it is still moving. Let go of my friend. I don't know why I just became Australian. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Cheese fries, please. <laughs> um. Probably flew down there once during the winter. Where? <laughs> stress, stress accidents. Wow. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> uh, all right. So then. Next is it, uh, Itali already did his. That Twig Blight is awake and is going to step up and attempt to hit Caleb. Caleb, you ticked off the bushes, huh? I believe an eight miss is correct. Yep. So you're able to easily step away as it skitters half limping up to you. Uh, That Twig Blight is asleep. Give me one second. Okay. He, uh, Sir Bradford moves closer to Belloc and Zakusu, and he takes a swing with his long sword at Zek. With advantage. Why? Because I'm restrained. You're. I am. No, you, you're grappled, aren't you? It says, and the target is restrained. Oh. Wow. Wow, it does. All right. I just thought you were grappled. Yeah. Um, very good. Does a 16 hit? Uh, no. Okay, but hold on. Yeah. And a 9 doesn't hit either. So it's not. I'm wiggling around a lot. Yep. And so that's... You see a bead of sweat on Sir Bradford's bark, barking head roll down. Find it. Belak. I think Sorry. I don't feel like the most damage. 
<clears throat> I'm just checking something. Hold on one second. Okay. Okay, that's what I needed to know. All right. Uh, actually, you can't do that because you're sweating it. It'll just be this advantage. How does that work for... I don't think it makes a difference then. Yeah, he's going to cast Entangled. He's going to cast what? Entangle. Yeah, I don't think that has an attack roll. Right, it doesn't. Yeah. So he's going to cast it on... He's going to cast it on Quark as the center of it with 20 feet out. Who is casting it? Uh, Belak, the druid. Belak. And so, oh, go ahead. No, I'm, I think, I think other, uh, Editions are creeping into my head. Oh, yeah, it's not an attack for opportunity. He just gets disadvantage if he was if he was rolling an attack roll. So basically, I need uh, Quark, Itali, Leo, Caleb, Autumn. What? Way out there. Yep. It's it's oh sorry you're still off because we were talking yeah it's twenty it's a twenty foot cube. I need you to make a uh, centered on who? It's centered on Quark. You're right at the edge of it. Uh, I need you to make a strength saving throw. That's a d twenty plus. Uh, your you should have a section called strength saving throw. Zero. Wow. That's what did you get? Lexi bug. You have a sixteen? Okay. Yep. Uh so well, so its bottom is centered on me, then if it was centered centered on me, it wouldn't be hitting everybody. How do you figure it's a twenty twenty foot box? Twenty You're, foot box, right? Which means goes ten, two blocks up from me, and two blocks down. Five, it wouldn't 10, hit Autumn. 15. It wouldn't hit. It Caleb. would hit me and Atali. I, I don't think it's radius. I think it's a twenty foot square. Yeah. So if I'm at the center of it, twenty that foot would square from put, a point within range. I think that you're meant to pick like an intersection with the cast of it for entangle, and then it goes out five, ten, fifteen, twenty, right? Fifteen. Which is still four. It's a 20 foot get. square. I think it's supposed to be 20 by 20 because I originally had it in uh, my head that it was 40 by 40, 40 like you do with a 20 foot radius, but it's not radius. It's yeah, 20 it's, foot it's square. It's a 20 foot square. Okay. So it should only catch Leo and Atali if I'm at the center. The cube, the cube size is expressed as the length of each side. Okay. All right. Yep. So Cork, Itali, and Leo. Then. So Leo failed with a zero, Cork failed with an eight. And Itali succeeded. And then I also need to. I think he just fails because he's asleep. So the twig blight is also entangled. So then, oh, I love I like that. Mark. That's, That's cool. awesome. Okay, and so the deal with that is a strength uh, check. Yeah, it's a strength check with a DC thirteen to get out of it. 
Okay. So that's his attack. This twig blight is awake. And it comes up and attacks Autumn as well. And Autumn, you're able to easily dodge out of the way before it hits you. You saw it scurrying through the brush. Sleep. Mithalus. Sixteen hit. A sixteen does hit. Nine plus ten points. So you shoot it, and you hit it right in the side. You see it go into the fletchings. Oh yeah! And it refuses to let go of Zach. Are you kidding me? All right. Then I am going to. Stealth again. It's the toad and the frog, man. Or the toad and the snake. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I forgot to take it off advantage. That's fine. Um, I am going to move behind this wall over here, a little south, uh, a little bit south from where I was. Oh, so then roll me a stealth now because you want to move and then stealth, not generally. Because they know where you are because you shot, so you can't do it in the same place. Hey, that's oh. a critical to sex. You're pretty sure you're hidden. <laughs> <laughs> What's worse is you critical success twice. Yeah. We all awesome. think he disappeared. We, we just like... Yeah, you, you have no, no idea. He's, that, just he's, he's just completely that coward. Gone. That coward. Uh, yeah, he just left the battlefield. <laughs> he's like, screw you guys, I'm going home. <laughs> you guys, I'm going home. Autumn. Remember to talk into your microphone. <laughs> oh, hold on. Can you heal me or does can healing you, word can heal yourself? Yes. Can you heal anyone else in my party? It can. I believe the range on it is touch. Okay. Wait, no, no. It's healing word. Healing word. No, you have a range on it. It should say what the range is. Sixty feet. Yep. So you can heal anyone within sixty feet. So you could heal, for example, Caleb. Yeah, Caleb, because he's yeah. pretty hurt. And myself. Uh, it's one or the other. Okay. So I would like to heal. Caleb. Okay. Uh, so what is the what does it say you roll for that? I believe it's D A. Thought it was one D six plus one. Maybe. Could be. I'm not sure. No, it might be one D four plus one, because it's only um, healing word. It's a bonus action. One D four. Okay, so one D four, so roll one D four. Which is the one that looks like the pyramid. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Three. Three. So you heal three points of damage, Caleb. As right. Autumn extends her arm and some light transfers between you and her. Okay. And I can so do something else. That's a bonus action, so you still have your normal action. You can do something. Plus your spellcasting ability modifier. Okay, so can I do fairy fire? Oh, what's your wisdom? Um, sorry, it's it's going to be on your character sheet. Um, my saving throw? No, the actual stat. Oh, four. Uh, plus four? Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be three plus four, Eric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's good? Also yeah. known as seven. Yep. Okay. Yes. So can I do fairy fire? Is it a, It's not a cantrip, so no, you can't. No, I can't? If you can't do two spells. spells, yeah. I can't do two spells, okay. You can as long as it's a cantrip. So you could do, what is it, frost ray or freezing ray? Frostbite? Frostbite, thank you. Okay. Or So can I do frostbite on the one right next to me? Or right? So because that's a ranged spell, mm -hmm. you'd be at disadvantage. You'd be better off smacking it with your club. Okay, so I can, my shillelagh? You don't have a shillelagh, you didn't cast that. Didn't so cast it's it. just, a, just okay, a club. Just a club then? Okay, so roll uh, d20? your d20 plus whatever your to hit is on the club. It should be on the character sheet, I think, in the middle. Oh, plus three. Plus three. There you go. Nine plus three is 12. Oh. 
Uh, I'm looking. Uh, that actually just misses. Okay. So can I move that one? You can move. However, it could get an attack against you if you move. Okay. So I'll just stay right there. You stay there? Okay. Great. Uh, asleep. 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 Leo. I'm bound, but am I able to, from my position, lean and see what is happening here? Yes. Okay. Um, in that case, then I will... I will say it's very uncomfortable, because you put your back against the wall, so you're, like, <laughs> having to twist around and, like, lean, but you can do it, yes. Okay. Yes, 100%. I am going to... Just yell out three times a charm, and I'm going to throw out sleep again into... I'm going to try to center it. What is it? It's 20 feet, right? Am I going to be able to pick a spot where I'm going to be able to hit? Zitali and Quark are, are doing well on health at the moment. They are. So I'm going to pick a spot that would just pick up Bellic, but not put Zek in jeopardy if I can help it. Okay. Bellic and the other two. Sure. I got it. Uh, seven and an eight for 15. Uh, four and a six for 25. Uh, first roll there was a five. 30. Okay. I actually need you to show me where you're actually casting this so that I know what to do. Sure. Fair enough. Uh, my goal was to, let's say it has a 20-foot radius, right? Yeah. Um, it would be... Are you including Zek? Uh, my intent is to try to avoid getting Zek into the sphere, but still hitting these, while including, theoretically, if I had to, Italian Quark. Um, better yet, what is the range on sleep? 60 feet? 60. Oh, yeah, it's plenty, plenty of space here. Um... I'm just going to yellow this into into like this location out here, so that I'm going to hit these here or here, whatever is going to be required to got hit. Got it. Got it. Got it. So Zek is, because, Zek is in there. Yeah, so Zek's got to be in there. There's okay. no There's no way around that. So Zek, you feel the frog loosen its grip on you, hmm. and Belek falls over as well, slumps to the ground. Uh, they, have, they have less hit points in them. <laughs> How many oh, do you have? Right uh, yes, they do. Oh wow! Uh, it's hard. And you rolled a thirty, right? Uh, twenty-five. Wait, no, thirty. Oh, You're 30. right. Yeah, thirty. Yeah. And Zek, as you feel the grip loosen on you, you also fade to black. Okay. And that's it. I say, oh shit, sorry, sorry. Um, and then I am going to Command Tika 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. A bird has beak, but can it slap? Uh, or do I have to do one damage to him? I think to you'd have to do one damage. So it says, it says slap or shake. I don't know that a bird can shake, and maybe it could slap. I mean, it's, it can, it's semi intelligent. It can peck it eyelids. I do think a it lot could. Of I tell you what, let's let's do this. It's not something you have it normally do, so let's let's make it good old fashioned percentage. Fifty and above, you succeed. Forty or forty nine and below, you fail. Okay, first D ten is a seven, so you succeed. So. Uh, Zach, you feel something pecking at your eyelids. It's rather disturbing, but you are awake, but prone on the ground. Okay. Oh, I sorry, we sorry, sorry. About Quark. No. I was like, man, Quark's right there. He's smart. <laughs> That's my bird. Don't hurt him. Don't hurt him. <laughs> Caleb. Yeah, that's not a problem. All right. Um... Zex be, I mean, being attacked by all the animals. I'm just pointing this out. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Maybe because he's kind of an abomination. <laughs> wow. True. Fair point. <laughs> it is in his name. It hurts, but it's true. Uh, what, I, what the, do do? Close, the one that's been swinging at me. Uh, so you, you'll you have to roll again because it's disadvantage for doing a ranged in melee. Okay. So just roll one more time. If it's 13 or above, you hit. And I'll take the nine fire. Yep. <laughs> you hit. And it goes up in a, in a screech of flames. And are you going to move from there? Yes. I'm going to come over here. Are uh, will uh, the two that we wanted, or the three that we wanted to save? Two, I guess, in it. Yeah, it would be the one directly to the west of you, and the one southwest of you. The two that are still awake, right? Yes, the two that are still awake. Oh, okay. And I'm not going to close to there. I'll go to there. Okay. Perfect. Uh, let's see. That twig bites asleep. Ah, uh, here we go. Uh, stand by one. She raises her hand and three glowing darts appear in the air. I'm just quickly doing one thing. Uh, Two go to Itali and one goes to Caleb. What are we getting? Magic missile. Actually, I need to double check. Except it's made of acid. It is. And aims for rats. <laughs> but that's horrible. <laughs> he, he's. <laughs> I'm not going to say why, but that's horrible. That is so bad. Okay. So the, really, they should be aiming for all of the rats that are in Torch Finder. So, Itali, the first one does three damage to you as it slams into you. Okay. The second one does four damage, and Caleb, four damage to you as well. Right. And she moves back closer to Belek. Actually, in front of Belek. Sleep. Quark. Hmm. Can I... Hmm. Okay, so uh, sp explain what I want to do and you can tell me how much of my actions and bonuses and stuff this would take. Sure. But uh, I want to see if I can identify the religious icon on Sir Bradford and make a plea to him in the name of his deity to snap out of the, th the thrall. So I'll let you uh, do that. Do the that the first part of identifying uh, what's on his shield as a bonus action. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, you'll have to roll religion. religion. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, you can see clearly it's Paylor. Paylor. Okay. And then, would it be the action to call out to him and try to? 
I would say yes. Okay. Um, what check would that would that be a persuasion? Or? Um, yeah, make a, make a persuasion check and do it with advantage. Okay. Persuasion. You don't intimidate myself. Yeah. Okay, and tell me what you say to him. Sir Bradford, in the name of Belar, remember your oath. Shake free from this evil thrall. Very good. Uh, you can see that another bead of sweat drips down his wooden forehead. That twig blade is asleep. Zakusu, you are on the ground with a bird pecking at your... He's continuing to peck at you. <laughs> One second. Peck. Peck, peck. Peck, peck, peck. Peck. Thank you, Bob Kilmer. All right. Um, I was getting my 11 year old instructions on how to take my hard friendly meal. Yay. I'm going to spend half my movement to, to lean up vampire style. <laughs> That's not disturbing <laughs> at all. <laughs> all right. I will turn to the bird and I'll nod like in thanks. And then I'm going to stab the spear straight down into that belly. Okay, you have uh, advantage. Yep. Doesn't it automatically crits against uh, uh, it does. disabled it opponent does. as well, right? Yes, oh. it does. Oh, is this an automatic crit? Oh. You have to still roll You still hit. have to roll the uh, hit with advantage, but if you hit, it's an automatic crit. So 18. Uh, that hits, and you see... Sir Bradford put up his shield like he is going to step in front of it and block you and does not. Okay. Uh, awesome. So roll your crit. Fourteen damage. And that was doubling your dice? That was doubling my dice. Okay, 14 damage. Uh, yes, you... You stab down into the ground and you hear the breath expire from Belak's body. And then I'm going to turn and as a bonus action... Spend a key point to punch the frog twice. No problem. <coughs> uh, the 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 frog basically explodes. Okay. And there is blood everywhere at the base of the tree. And then I'm going to take a chance and move here. Sir Bradford, actually, as soon as you you look back, Sharwin and Sir Bradford seem to have blank stares. Okay. And I'll say, um, it appears Bellic has left the building. Uh, Itali. Let's see. So are these people like snapped out of whatever they were doing or? I don't know. They haven't done anything yet. They haven't done anything. Hmm. They were the ones we wanted alive anyway. Clean up the blights. The wake soon. That is true. I'll go over here and start attacking this one in front of me with the rapier. Basically, pretend rounds. Let's see. Yeah. And since it's sleep, I get advantage on that, right? Uh, yeah. You do. All right. So. All you need to do is roll above. It. Yeah. You you basically slice it in half. Cool. Well, that takes care of that one. And that's pretty much all I can do, right? I moved and attack. Yep. All right, that's it for me. 
sleep. Sir Bradford's arms go limp. He's still holding his sword and his uh, his shield, but he does not seem to be moving or reacting. Uh, Belek is dead. The twig blight here is actually alive and awake, and it is attacking Autumn. It slashes at, back. slashes at her with the claws. Uh, unfortunately, that does hit for five piercing damage. How much HP did you have total? She had 18. To- okay, so you're down to eight. Sleep, Mithalus. I guess I'll just kill this one that's asleep here. To hit him for use. Okay. Uh, it is actually on the ground, so you have disadvantage if you're shooting at it. Sleep? Yep. Anything prone on the ground, you have disadvantage to shoot at. Okay, then. Methalos didn't abandon us. <laughs> <laughs> I get advantage of it now, right? If you're, if you're melee attacking, that is correct. Ah, uh, yeah, that you, you, you destroy it. You don't have to roll damage. They only have... I mean, unless... Uh, I guess the... No. Nah. Yeah, even so. It's no, crit. I don't think you can do it. Yep, so that's more than plus, like, they have. Anything else on your action? Uh, no, that'll do it. Okay. Autumn. Can I use a healing word on me? You can, and that'll be your second sp- spell slot. Okay. Yep. So that's your bonus action. So roll uh, 1d4 and add 3. Oh, 4. Sorry. 1d4, 1d4 and add 4, sorry. 4? Yeah. Okay. So 4 plus 4 is 7. 4 plus 4 is 8. Is 8. Yep, so you recover 8 hit points. Okay. So you're almost full again. Okay. You're just 2 down. 2 down? Yep. Okay. And then you still have your action that you can do. Do you want to swing your club at the one that's attacking you? Okay. Okay. So it was 1d20 plus 3. It's 14. That just hits. Uh, so roll your damage. And that's actually in the same line where with your club where it tells you the plus three on your sheet in the middle. So a d20? Uh, no, it's going to be... It should say like... Plus three to hit, and then it'll be like a D6 or and should have like a plus number after it, too. Seven. Seven? Okay. Yeah, you uh, hit it with your cudgel, and it shatters and goes flying everywhere, so that twig plate is dead. Mm, so can I move or wait? Is that one sleeping? Uh, yeah, they're all sleeping near you now. Okay. So where do you want to move to? Um, I just want to move away from that one that's right above me. Do you want to move down by Itali? That would be great. Okay. So Autumn comes stomping up behind you. Sleep. And what did you say I had left? Uh, you have, you have, you're just down two hit points. Okay, thank you. you of course. Uh, Leo. Everything is either prone or we're not killing it at the moment, right? Correct. Okay. I'm going to spend an action trying to break free. So DC 13 strength check. Oh, you know what? No. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because as soon as Bellic died, he it was concentration, so... Ah, yeah. yeah. So he, his concentration oh, definitely Oh, even when he broken. went to sleep, yeah. I would have already <laughs> yeah. been out of it. That is correct. Okay. So, yes. Never mind. The, the entanglement... 
sinks back into the ground. I would have had a 17 strength check. Oh, I was well. going to put that out there for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Flex those wizard muscles. <laughs> one time it's ever going to happen. I feel like I can lift a bus off a baby this one time. <laughs> Um, I am I'm just going to walk up to the one that's laying next to Caleb and I'm just going to take my staff and kind of just shove at it. Okay. It. Make an attack roll. Poke at it, essentially. With, with advantage. Uh, 17 minus yep. 1 and a Oh, no, sorry, plus one, 18. It's going to hit. Yep, that hits, and do crit damage. Uh, roll one die and double it, right? Uh, no, roll two die. Roll two die. You double the die, yeah. You don't double the value, you double the die. Oh. Uh, six, plus, uh, six minus, minus one, five. <laughs> the wizard gets a melee kill. <laughs> getting melee kills. Seventeen strings checks and a melee kill. <laughs> Man, Lou told me he wants to tank next round, next next uh, session. Uh, right, Kate, he's, he's, fighter, he's, huh? he's going to dual class barbarian. Right? That's, right, that's right, Caleb. You're up. <laughs> All right. Um. You know what? I'm going to say for the sake of time, we thank you that we just killed. The twig we blight. just killed all the rest of the twig blights. That will leave us with what to do, and what you're going to try and do with Sharwin and Sir Bradford uh, and the body of Belloc. But we will do that after we take a quick twenty minute break. So be back in twenty minutes, and we'll see you all then. Thank you for letting me get my.
Did you know that you can subscribe to the channel for free if you have Amazon Prime? It's true. All you have to do is sign into your Amazon account, and then go to gaming.amazon.com. On the left side of the screen, under your name, it will ask you to link your Twitch account. Once that's done, just head over to our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash gamersledge. You'll have an option to subscribe using your Twitch Prime. It costs you nothing but helps support the channel. There is one catch, it runs out in 30 days, so make sure you come back and click the subscribe button again next month if you want to continue supporting great shows like this one. Thanks for helping. Be excellent to each other. And game on. There's new items in the merch store. Head to bit.ly slash gamersledge merch. That's all one word, gamers, ledge merch to check out the newest latest and greatest gifts like mugs t-shirts mouse pads stickers and more show some love for the show creators they get a cut from each item sold whether it is a notice me senpai dm t-shirt or a mug that helps you clarify when a point needs to be made in conversation there's still a few minutes left in the break you've got time we will be here when you get back visit bit.ly slash gamer sledge merch be excellent to each other in merch. I mean, game. On.
Welcome back, everyone. Where we left off, we had uh, the the party had managed to get to the heart of the grove in the below, and they had killed Belak and dispatched of all the twig blights, leaving Sharwin, Hugh Krill, and Sir Bradford standing motionless in front of the Golthias tree. And that's where we'll pick back up. So, so this is a tree that the goblins keep getting their stuff from. Yes, and uh, Leo had walked forward uh, and was investigating the tree. I need you to make me a. Give me one second. It's clear that uh, they're like despondent at this point, and I don't have anything to worry about from so far. Yeah. Okay. Uh, make me a perception check, please. I would like to search their uh, many of the chains. Absolutely. Terrible. Uh, three. Okay. Um. Zek is searching Belak. Belak has. Let's see. Belak has stuff. Stuff. Sure, you wanted to know more. Uh, okay, Where's so at least twenty-five gold. <laughs> uh, Belak has a key. Three potions of healing, two doses of antitoxin. Slowly. Potions healing. Three, three po antitoxin? Uh, three, three healing, two antitoxin. Two antitoxin. And a wand of entangle. And a wand of entangle. And I will get you the wand of entangle here momentarily. Wand of entangle. Really? 
Okay. Uh, I'll get you the, the the details about that one later. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, who else is doing what? I'm searching the cavern. You're searching the cavern. Okay. So, Autumn, what are you doing? What do you mean? What do you want to do at this point? Um, I'll just stand outside and watch. You're going to stand where you're at and, and kind of watch? Okay. Uh, Itali? I'm going to come over here and kind of like check these people out. Like, have they come to yet? Like, do they, or are they still just staring blankly? That they are currently just staring blankly. However, as you inspect them, um, give me an insight check. Insight. Hey, hey Mithilis. Yo. I found a key, so if you find something out there that needs a key. Gotcha. Oh, wait. Hold on. I rolled advantage. Let me do normal. Okay, no, do that's normal. Fine. That's fine. Okay. Ah, 10. Yeah, they're just kind of standing there, not moving. I'm going to try to get this guy's attention over here. I think his name is Sir Bradford or something like that. Yes. I'm just going to like snap my finger around his face, like any movement at all. Uh, no response. No response. And he should have. Hey, Zach, you could probably use these guys for your shows that you do at bars and whatnot. They're not even moving. You can, like, dress them out, up as clown or something. Uh, but, well, I find that idea entertaining. That would be no better than Bella. Um, I'm going to delicately search Sharma. Okay. Uh, you find... Hey, Itali, see if mm -hmm. you can't pull uh, Sir Bradford's sword like weapons and that kind of stuff away from them just in case. Okay, I'll go do that. Oh, Sir Bradford, not the dead guy. Gotcha. Yeah. I will start doing that. Getting okay. weapons and stuff away from him. They come out of his hands uh, at your insistence. Okay. And uh, you find on Sharwin, she has her signet ring on her hand um, and she has a spell book. I will take the spell book. Okay. It with the wand uh, and a dagger and a dagger okay and there was no funding on either Bella or her uh that would be a negative okay. ghost writer is there any um, fruit on the tree mm -hmm. good question um make me a perception check please my three perception was inadequate <laughs> it's because you chained it all into strength tonight. Yeah. No, yeah. Got a punch drunk head rush. So it should be in the orange I section. Don't need my eyes. I have my fuse. I think it's in the orange section and it should be uh, under wisdom. Your wisdom's yeah. a four, so you're probably going to have a four or six. About here on the sheet. It's under wisdom and perception four. So D twenty plus four. Thirteen plus four seventeen. You gotta say it into the mic though. Seventeen? Yep. So what you find is you inspect the tree. And instead of finding fruit hanging from the branches like you would normally see, you find the fruit kind of half embedded in the tree like a polyp being expelled from the tree. There's two of them. Only two? Only two. Right, Rose Shaggy. Can I take this? Wait, there's, yeah? there's two, two fruits? Is that right? That can is I, correct. Can I see if I notice her getting the fruit? Make me a perception check. 
Were the two fruits there when we got here? Uh, yeah, you see her. You see her walk up and and kind of pluck them out of the side of the tree. And there, are, she does one and then two, and that seems to be it. Um, Agam. Yes. Would it be possible to discuss where those fruits are going? If you remember that my forest is dying. I I think I also have a loved one who is perishing for the same reason. Okay, so I will give them to you for right now, and then just remember that um, any that we get in the future, can we talk about where they're going to? I I only need one. Okay, so you can take one and I'll take one. Uh, do we, have you mentioned where your forest is? No. No. She's not been um, big on small talk. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even sure if I need this whole fruit. Okay. So I'm I'm free to share whatever is not used to heal my friend. That's fine. So can you hold my hand to mine for oh, me? Sure. Sure. Okay, thank you. And then he disappears into the globe and is never seen again. I, I totally <laughs> I totally thought you're gonna put him in the in the eye sockets of the dragon's head. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, while I appreciate you have been able to find some of this fruit you are looking for, this, this tree is an aberration and will always inspire potentially more tri- tree blights and others to try to take its power and use it in unseemly ways. I believe we should try to destroy this tree. Nay, I demand we consider destroying this tree. <laughs> Would you like to do that? I love you, Court. So forceful. <laughs> You're so aggressive. Okay. So how would you like to do that? Says the tree oh. to you. <laughs> Says the tree to you. <laughs> Obviously, only the evil tree. Well, the Belloc said it was spawned from a stake that was used against a vampire. I would imagine fire to be effective against this, as it would be most trees. So if that's if that's what you're going to do, I'm going to step way back. Yeah, that, that would be well advised. I, I think we should wait until we are all done here, because there's no telling what kind of fumes this tree will put off. Uh, I'm I'm not sold on this concept quite yet. Do we forget Neither that this I. tree is... Something that not only produces very valuable fruit, but also produces a fruit that is uh, highly sought after by each of us. This, Yes, there is a fruit that kills from this tree, but perhaps this tree is not inherently bad. It does produce some good. I recommend Zach, we do. Zach looks at Are you up, planning on living here? And his, <laughs> eyes, his eyes go thin. The concern I have is the word Bellic used. Oh, where is that? Supplicant. I believe the tree is feeding on people. Matt, make me a nature check, please. Well, yeah, that's why I was asking if the two apples were here earlier. Because two people died and then all these apples showed up. Two apples, to be precise. Can I make an investigation check looking for bones? Sure. Around the around the, the bottom of the tree. Sure. Absolutely. 15, 17. <clears throat> where where um, Leo had been distracted uh, by all the blood from the frog, uh, you do not find any bones. Comma, okay. however, what you do find is the following. Bone dust. <laughs> it's been turned into fertilizer. You see buried in the ground and tangled into the tree roots at the back of the tree some form of artifact with glowing runes. Uh, Zach, we'll see it. Step back and say, um, Leo, Caleb, uh, Mythalus, I think this is more your area. I'm afraid I set it off. I'll quickly rush over. Okay. 
So here's the, how this is going to work. I very much am putting this rule in place. You guys need to figure out how you're going to do this. Either one person tries with another assisting and they get advantage on the roll, or two people can roll separately. Would we know that if this is arcane or history in advance of that? It is definitely arcane. Okay. So given that I'm going to, without objection from anybody else, I'm going to ask Caleb to assist me with the research on this or for viewing this artifact together. So I'd like to take the role myself if there's no objection with advantage. I don't have an, an objection to that. You need a arcana role for me to assist? No, no you, you, you're just giving him advantage because you're helping him. Okay. Hey, Mark? Right. Yes. Did you remind me, did we pull white fruit or red fruit? Red fruit. In fact, it's glowing slightly. Okay. Come on, please. Uh, 26. Natural 20. Okay, so... At first, at first, the first thing you can see is this looks like a steak. Not a vampire steak, but a metal steak of some kind. Um, you, at first, you try to suss the marking, the cipher, the markings on it. But as you study it, and then Caleb kind of turns it over, and even Mithalus kind of looks at it and, and says, no, that's the elven glyph for this. You find that it is an ancient ar elven artifact, possibly 2,000 years or older, and it's some sort of magic tether. You can understand some of the writing, each of you, and together you can decipher most of it, and it seems like it is... Here, here's the easiest way to explain this. In magic there are opposing schools. If you're good at this one, you're not good at this one. If you're, if you want to counter this, you use this. Most spells don't use all magic because no one's good at all magic and can't cast all magic. However, it seems that not only are all of the schools of magic represented on here, there's extra runes that none of you can decipher. But what you can tell is that this thing is siphoning power in a bad way. It's being, this magic is being misused somehow. And you're fairly sure that you can deactivate it with advantage. So what I can tell is that this is, it's, it has a, a sinister energy pull from it, but that it is not itself inherently sinister, the stake. Right. Correct. Okay. And so I will relay that general sentiment after you know, Caleb meets the list and, and I will be huddled together around this with Caleb's understanding of, you know, Draconic and Mithilus for Elvin and my Dwarvish and whatever. We'll, we'll yep. come together on, on observing it and come to a consensus that this doesn't seem to be inherently bad, but this situation, I believe, is. Should we attempt to disable this, and do we want to take this on ourselves, or what should we do? Is there any indication that we would have that like a failed attempt on this could cost lives or cause explosions or anything? I mean, it doesn't seem like it because it seems like since it uses all of the schools of magic, it's either going to fizzle or it's going to do something. I don't. You, you're not. You, you don't get the idea the idea that it can be a catastrophic wrong. Yeah, we, and we don't know enough. We are children who have found our daddy's gun. But you're pretty sure that looking at it, you can identify the safety. Right. I say we turn it off. All right, let's give it a shot. Okay, so roll... Roll Arcana with advantage. Second Arcana roll. A modified 20. Okay. 
So you begin to uh, weave threads of magic to enter it. And you weave the magic you believe will deactivate the artifact involving just a little bit of each school of magic. You've never heard of doing this before. And in the same way, like I said, it sounds not the best crazy idea. Talk. Yeah, crazy talk. Um, but tentatively, you speak the words to some tiny amount of each of the schools of magic. The strands of energy reach from your hands into the dark iron. And the lit runes energy drains down the front until none of the runes are glowing any longer. You breathe a sigh of relief. The wrongness you felt earlier is gone. And the stake sits dormant. I'm going to hold it out in front of me and with Caleb and Mithilis next to me, I'm going to say, we're going to work on this together and see if there's good that we can take from this. And at least if we can prevent its misuse and perhaps it's valuable. We Anyway, let's, let's hold on to this. Any reaction from Sharwin or Sir Bradford as it's being deactivated or gets deactivated? No. Does Any the tree... tree? No. So Any sense of why this stake was there? Not at the moment. Do I see? Mm. Uh, make make me a uh, Daniel Zach. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Make me a. Do, 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 do. Not that. That. Um. Make me an insight or nature check. Uh, 16, insight. Insight. The more you look at Sharwin and Sir Bradford, mm -hmm. the more you seem to think that destroying the tree might have an effect on them. Now, granted, you don't know what that effect is, but... I'll walk over to the um, three amigos. I'm going to hand them the um, Sharwin's Book of Spells. As far as I can tell, that's what it is. I have no idea. And the wand that has this weird, I think it's magical. I don't know. I think he was holding it earlier when he cast that spell at you. Um, and uh, I think the if you look at how the bark skin and the graying hue <clears throat> is similar to that of the tree, I think the fact that the tree, I'm saying this loud enough that hopefully the others can hear too, um, the tree is tied to them for good or for ill. Well, for ill, because no good it would seem to be ill. <laughs> yeah. Well, I understand your inquisitive mind, Leonardo. I think too much rides on this for the sake of magical study. I just wanted to glean any insight perhaps that we can grant from this. I do not believe that this tree's inherent value is greater than that of Sir Bradford's and Sharwin's, but I would like to know what the implications are or maybe at least understand them slightly better of what destroying the tree may do. I don't know if it is the only thing that supports their life or if it is the one that controls them. I, I want to be careful. Well, don't flip. Why it. don't we first move them into the outer chamber and see if some distance from this tree creature could be effective on them? Tree creature. Mithilis, did you search the whole area yeah i went around i didn't yeah did you roll an in investigation i did not 
Yeah, you don't you don't find anything else uh, within this chamber, really. Are there any offshoot chambers? No, no we're not. No. What's the key for? <laughs> it's the key to your heart, Zach. Did uh, <laughs> what's his name? The dead druid have any like notes or papers or anything else that doesn't seem like it's valuable on him? He had. Oh, you mean besides? Are you asking me or the GM? You. Yes, he had these potions of healing, which at some point I'll have to have one of you look at to figure out what kind of healing. Two vials of antitoxin, and then the other stuff that I showed you. No papers or notes or... Not that I found, but I also wasn't really looking for it. He might have something just tucked into his drawers or something. <laughs> he didn't really have any pouches. Drawers, but... Uh, yeah, I'm going to search him again and see if he had any, like, papers or notes or... He does not. Clues. He does not. No diary with his grand plan in it. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... Well, we came across a small library. Yeah. So that, with that my plan. Plan. But the trapped book didn't seem like a diary. It, the diary may have still been there. Was, was there any locked doors or drawers there? No, but if you recall, you all were miserable at searching. Yes. The burned room was really bad for our search ability in the... Yes, that, uh, when that also we were in the burned true. study. Also true. We had a hard time finding anything in there. Um, before I forget, um, Autumn, here's four gold pieces. I'm sorry? Here's four gold pieces. Okay. That I've been holding on to. Because I wasn't sure when we see you again. Thank you. I lied. Mithalus, on upon further examination of Belak, you find a small box. And it has um it has ten I prepped a whole bunch of other body parts. <laughs> really, I Daniel? You yep. have a whole bunch of other body yeah, I don't know why you have a bunch of other body parts prepped I'm also. But... Off, I'm snipping off pieces because like the tree, I'm building a man. Nice. Um, yeah. yeah, so in it, Mithalus is uh, 10... How's that work? 10 silver. And when you close it and open it again, it has one... Gold piece. Ooh. This is a fun little box. What happens if you do it again? <laughs> do you do it again? Of course. Uh, it has 10 silver in it. Uh, so it just exchanges it for the same thing. 10 silver is one gold. Take out okay. nine silver. <laughs> Close it and open it again. There's just one silver in it. Okay. There's not 10 copper. <laughs> you weren't holding it thinking that, so no, there's not. <laughs> can, can, can I see that? It's pretty nifty. Sure. I'll put the <coughs> silver back in it, flip it again for the gold. Yep. It's got one gold. Yeah, so yeah, you can have it. Yeah. Sweet. Thank you. That will make some parts of my life so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> Well, unless anyone objects, I'm going to take these two out into the outer area and, and just see if the, some distance from the tree improves their condition. Or, worst case, yeah, worsens it. Yeah, you're able yeah, to... Give me one second. Uh, detect magic. Just cast it. See if there's anything other than the potions and wand. Sharwin, Sir Bradford, the tree... And the one apple that Sakuzu has, and the one apple that uh, uh, Autumn has, and Sir Bradford's sword, and Sharwin's book of spells. Sir Bradford's sword? Yep. Nice. But um, not his armor or shield, right? Uh, service says I don't think so. 
or her and as far as I know, I have both pieces of fruit right now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot that she gave you both. So, yes. Uh, yeah, not his armor, but his sword. And not Sharwin's dagger? And not Sharwin's dagger. Okay. Does anybody in our group use a longsword? Other than me? Mm, not that I can think of. Right, well, or can probably tie it right. to the stick and get another spear out of it. <laughs> well, yes, if we Sir do Bradford doesn't remember, come out of this, then uh, I may want to lay claim to that later. Uh, so nothing else in the corners, nothing around the room. Nope. Just the items that he had. Just the items that he had. Is the box magical that I handed? Uh, oh, yes, it, it totally is. My bad. Is it what, tra like transformation or whatever that school yes. is? Yes, school. Yes, transformation. All right. Um, that'll do it for me. If we want to walk them out and see if uh, distance like, breaks the spell. I would like to stop again in that library. Library. We'll walk them out of the room, out of the... So yeah. are you all going? No. Okay. Am I presumed to have this... Zach, who did you actually give the spell book to from Sharwin? I tossed it to the three of you. And then I broke a pool, a pool cue and tossed it down too. <laughs> no, I don't. I just, I literally handed it to the three of them. I don't use spell books, so you. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I don't care. I'll, I'll hold it, I wasn't. So we'll I, I yeah, well, no, we'll, we'll, we'll check it out later. Yeah. I, I took it from her, assuming it was a spell book. <laughs> I couldn't read it even if I wanted to, so I have no idea what it is. <laughs> And the, the wand, the only reason I gave you the wand is because it's a stick that has a handle. So, I know Mithalus and Cork are walking them out. Is anyone else going with them? I'll go. Okay, so Tali, Mithalus, I don't even see you, Mithalus. I'm right here. Thank you, Cork. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so yes, uh, where are you walking them to? Uh, uh, there's only one exit. I know, but are you like going all the way back to the library, or are you just I, going? I thought we would go like here for just you know, okay, just to sure. Go there and check and see how they react. Sure, sure. So you move them up there, and the stream is not going to be able to see you, but that's okay. And there is no change. The three of you are up there. Yeah. Can we walk them back to the little room we camped in? You can if you want to. Yep. Yeah, may as well. Okay. So I will move them up there, and you guys need to move yourselves up there. Oh, Cork, you can't see, can you? No. All right, stand by. The owl doesn't have night vision. That is so weird. He's technically yeah, not. Owls actually <laughs> don't have that great of a they it, mostly navigate it, by sound. Give it like three months and we'll have a more accurate representation. Yep. Well, actually, I can once I get in there. There must still be enough of a light source coming from somewhere. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah, I, I, there's going to be a much brighter light source here pretty quick. Yep. Isn't that right, Caleb? Yes, there is. Okay. That's messed up. Um, okay. So you walk them up there. The vampire tree. They, oh. <laughs> they, they, um, they complacent, complicitly go where you lead them. Mm. I don't know if you guys are going to destroy the tree or not, but I think that's the only way these two come out of this, if they come out at all. One second. I'm I need a Send something to you, GM. Nope. What am I doing wrong? What is the slash here? W Instant. slash W space GM is space up for everybody? No slash miss a uh, message. Okay. No, sorry, space yeah. message. Um, I 
Uh, yeah, that. To me, if you would. Uh, While you guys are doing that, seeing no change in them, uh, Quark's going to head back to the room and report back to the rest of them that, that nothing had changed, and he still highly recommends we consider demands we would consider destruction of the tree via fire or whatever method the mages would best choose. Oh, it's going to burn. <laughs> In fact, okay. I would like to, uh, well, we can't stake it and scatter the ashes over water. But that's what I'd like to do. Or, you know, Burn it and scatter the ashes over water. If it had a head, I'd recommend we burn them in separate pyres and scatter those ashes separately. Well, if it had a head, it'd just end up on the tree's limbs, just like the dragon head. No. You do not save vampire heads. That's how you get more vampires. That's right. <laughs> Vampires are a plague on my world, and I'm not going to see them get another foothold in this. That's not the, the first time you've said something like that on your world. Caleb. Yeah, I'm not from this one. I Caleb. We we down the dog. Yes. Trash, trash, trash. Uh, check your whispers. And Zach, check your whispers. Oh, yes, I suppose we need to take the body of Bellic back to Grundle so she can see that he is, in fact, deceased. Leo? Yeah, hey, if he's dead, does that mean our treasures or is our rewards less? Yep, yep. Leo? Yep. We're trying to take samples of the vampire tree. Well, I need to test this. This is a hard line for me. I'm sorry. Can I have some of the bark, at least? Uh, no. And I begin burning it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, fair Quark enough. Goes and drags Bellic's body away from the, the fire. Why do we so want to burn a tree that makes fruit? It's a vampire tree. But it makes fruit. It's a vampire tree. No, that's why. <laughs> but that's it makes reason. fruit. And it also makes twig blights from the seeds of that fruit. Yeah. There is nothing. That Can comes you out find of this me another that tree that makes fruit? Tainted by the evil of the vampire. Can you All find me another tree that makes fruit? fruit? Wait, don't Leo? you make fruit? Didn't you give us these berries, Leo? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not worth the fight. Oh, no, I already dropped it after he started burning the stuff out of my hand. Uh, you need to roll an attack and damage, please, if you're actually going to start burning it. Oh, I do? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Mark, did you hear I'm pulling Bellic's body out of the way so it doesn't accidentally get burned? Sure. It's, it's clear now. And okay. I'm watching these two to see if there's any change in them while the burning begins. Please, that's right. Oh, I think he can burn that tree. Uh, okay, so I gotta wait till my TV clears off so I can see what you rolled. Okay, I rolled crap. It's it actually, is a space, It is a stationary tree. It is a stationary tree. Uh, it did, does have an AC, though. So give me one second. I got to find what it was. Hold on. It's probably higher than eight. Because keep in mind, it also represents armor over the tree. Yeah. Uh, yep, yep, yep. While it's, while it's burning, Zeth is transferring silver. <laughs> okay. Zero fiddled. Zek converts coin. <laughs> uh, here we go. 
No, that doesn't tell me. Oh, give me one second. I have apparently buried this somewhere because I need to see how much. Uh, here we go. Uh, no, you you try to light the tree on fire and it it does not catch at that point. I'm going to cast Minor Illusion and there's going to be like a little fire that's starting and some smoke so coming I, up. I switched to a different spell and I know that one hits. Sure, you totally can. I mean, you can't do that. <laughs> um, and lightning arcs across, and it just keeps doing that until the tree is on fire and dead. Well, it's it's not dead yet. Okay, it's it it happens every round. It's going to keep getting hit by lightning. Okay, is anybody going to stop him? Is a short question. How can I stop? There any reaction from these two? Not yet. All right. Uh, after a while, mm -hmm. uh, the tree catches fire and burns, and it smolders to the ground. Um, the two of uh, Sir Bradford and Sharwin uh, begin to come out of their stupor. But they look at each other and then they look at Mithilus and they say, what did you do? Me? Nothing. Stop the druid that was controlling you from trying to attack us. You killed the tree, didn't you? Me? Again? I didn't kill the tree. Why? Should we? Should the tree not have been killed? Sharwin um, sets down in the chair. I can feel its life force fading, as is mine. Sir Bradford uh, rests his hand against the wall. He says, I, I don't know, uh, know how long we are for this world. Need a little help here. A little help here. Tree dying is causing them to die. Park will rush back. Uh, let, let's try the berries. And switched accent again for some random reason. Does anyone know yeah. medicine? Medicine, medicine. I have a little bit of medicine. Perhaps there's something within them. Oh, that vial of unknown liquid. Did we ever determine what that was? In the meantime, I'm shoving a berry into uh, Sharwin's mouth, a good berry into Sharwin's mouth to see if that'll do anything. Thank you, friend. I, I can do it myself. As <laughs> 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 Hard, it up. Yeah, and the regurgitates <laughs> it. Cool. Yeah, nice. Um, <laughs> she eats the berry and says, mm, quite, quite good, but I feel no change. Man, Quark, we're going to have to talk about consent after this, but for now, let's just try to figure this out. So, is the tree dying causing you guys? To yes. I believe so. Where's my mother? I can tell. Uh, no, I'm not there. Am I able to, theoretically, could I use chromatic orb and a cold to try to stop the tree from burning any further? Not at this point. It's 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 toast. Yeah, okay. yeah. And it wasn't until that moment that they came out of their stupor. Right. So it wasn't going to matter anyway. Like they were that... going to remain in a stupor, or they were going to. No, that... but perhaps we could have brought them to somebody that could have cured them from their ailment. Do you know how you were bound to the tree? We were sacrificed to it. We were ingested into it it swallowed us whole and we came out like this but under Belek's command now is the, there any more other trees out there do you know of the Golthias tree I hope not I, well, the, I, Sir Bradford says I am trying to fend off what I feel is happening inside 
me. But I believe I won't be able to do it for more than a day. Does it take us like a day to get it down? Just under. Just under there. Okay, well, we can try getting them back into town like ASAP. The cleric, Neil. I'm going to... Zach, I, I need you. Um, guide me through here. I'm going to send Tika ahead as Tika can move about twice as fast as we can. And we'll try the same thing. But... Um, this time, hopefully, the cleric will know to bring any materials necessary to heal. Uh, as Do Zach, they have a signet ring or something that Tika can carry to the cleric? Does anybody have some parchment? We can write a live help and attach it to the ring, and Tika can carry it. A live help fading? Yes. A live but fading help. Uh, I, leave, I leave this to you. I fly the bird. <laughs> so remind me when you're flying the bird I cannot you see or see or hear me but you can feel me hear. Correct? correct okay um so Zek is going to uh lead you out of the so as you two take a step to the north it is at that point that the spike in Leo's hand begins to fill again. And as it does, it begins to vibrate so destructively that you can no longer let go of it. The glowing energy that had infused the runes now infused the tip of the spike and you feel a rush of energy flow through you. Leo's eyes and mouth emit dark purplish energy in a light pattern. To say it looks he, he looks scary is an understatement. He screams, and the light from the tip of the spike scatters in multiple directions at once, hitting Caleb, Autumn, Mithalus, Itali, doesn't matter. Um, everyone but got some magic. Yeah. everyone but Zek. And something hey, inside all of your minds breaks and you feel a surge of possibility wash over you. Potential unlocked. Your consciousness expanding slightly. And after striking each of you, the energy pulls something out of you and back towards the tip of the spike and it gets larger and larger, and a giant column of purple energy roars upward through the sunless citadel and out of sight. And as Leo's scream fades, he has fallen to his knees, and where once a dark iron rod was held in his hand, sits a book with gently glowing purplish runes. Does that mean we leveled up or something? <laughs> Ar Arcana, can I read the runes? Do I know what they... I, I had never thought about that, Mark. I am the only one without magic. That's correct. Huh. So I guess I have no, no longing for hope, like you guys. That's, that's actually not why, but that's, that's okay. Wait, questions. No, that's why, Mark. So, yeah, that's that's why. so that... That thing that just glowed and did whatever, that was a stake, right? It, it was a stake. Hey, it, um, and it had a, what been, it's what was put into the vampire, right? No, it is not. It was not a wooden stake. It was a metal stake. It was a spike. Okay. A like spike, a spike. Track. Yeah, like a railroad but spike. It, so it wasn't put into like a vampire or anything, just a train. It might have been. I don't know. Thousands of years ago or whatever. And and if 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 it was put into a vampire, wouldn't that vampire still be there? Maybe. Caleb, what was your question? Did that feel like the first time that something like that happened? That feels like the first time that's ever happened to you. 
That felt okay. that felt like nothing you've ever experienced. All right. So, uh, is Leo on like his knees? Yes. Zach is going to draw, and is the tree on fire? The tree is is just smoldering at this point. It's it's been it's, it's been done for a while. Okay. Uh, he's going to uh, get down on level with Leo and say, "Are you okay?" That was intense. I don't know what just happened. Yes, but are you okay? I'm alive. It, it hit you and Autumn and Caleb. It was a surge of magical energy. It's, I feel different. I'm not certain how yet. Caleb, I need you to make happened. me a dex check. I mean, I, I have no a dex doubt save, something I'm sorry. happened. You guys, uh, all three of you are of magical nature. I myself am cursed. So nothing like that would touch me anyway. Itali, I need you to make me a dex save. Uh, a second time, Quark and Mithalos, I need you to make me a dex save. And Autumn, I need you to make me a dex save. So that's in the orange section under dexterity. And um, one second. Was there any okay. visible change to Sir Bradford or Talia? From the no, no, okay. and it, it, it did not hit them. It did not strike them. Or Sharwin, sorry, yeah, the wrong name. Um, everyone except Mithalus, there is a violent shuddering below you. And everyone else is uh, is not able to stay on their feet except Mithalos. Everyone else is knocked prone. And the shuddering intensifies into a rumble, and you feel yourself pushed downward against the ground of the grove. Is the, the citadel is rising, isn't it? Is it? The camera cuts out to the lip of the crevice the party had previously climbed down, only to see uh, the top of the parapet you'd initially climbed down onto, lifting up hundreds of feet into the air until it slows and the first story landing at the base of the parapet is now even with the ground leading to the old road. Somewhere, an elven lute plays a beautiful melody and the citadel comes to rest with finality. Mm. No longer the sunken citadel? You're inside, you can't tell. Send you a message, Mark. Well, that book seems a little dangerous, so I'm going to wrap it up and actually put it in my bag. So you're just prying it out of his hand? Yeah, I'm going to fight you for that. No, no it it's in Leo's ground. hand. No, the oh. spike like burned into and transformed into the book inside of my hand. No, oh. oh. all right. Then no. I'll just... um, and to answer somebody's question from earlier, can you tell what it is uh, or read it? Um, there are, it looks like a spell book, but there are th runes in it that you have never seen and spells that you think you've never seen is the short answer. I'm just going to clutch it to my chest as if like I'm writhing in pain. Make me a perception check with disadvantage. Uh, three. Okay. Um, as we're, we're regaining and I'll, I'll everything. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cork, you're saying? Um, I was just um, going to uh, ask Sir Bradford. Um, Sir Bradford, you said you could feel what was happening. Are you dying or are you turning? It feels like we are dying. Okay. One problem can be slightly different from the other. Right. Zach is going to go out to the, these two. And you're taking him. you're taking with Leo with you or no? Yes. Well, okay. I'm going to try to take Leo with me, but I'm not going to force him. 
Are you going to go with Zek? For so my my intent is still the same. I'm going to keep the book clutched. Right. And I'm hold going on to, to Zach hold and, on to yeah, Zach. So he yeah. goes with you. Okay. Yeah. And I'm making sure he doesn't trip over things because I'm assuming his mind is still in the bird. I have no idea. But, I mean, he heard me talking, so I guess he's not in the bird. You can you can shake me. I'll, I'll say this before I go in. At, at any point, you can shake me, shake my hand, and I will be able to come back. But I will okay. need to return. Then I'll be holding him by the upper arm. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna. Uh, has anybody checked them medically? We did receive two vials of antitoxin. Now I don't. I don't know anything about that kind of medicine. There was also a vial with an unknown fluid in it. Was there not? Yes, I believe so. Make me an intelligence check, Cork and Zakusu. That would be a one. I'm really <laughs> certain that we should get ash from the tree and make a poultice and put it under their arms. You want to do what with poultry? <laughs> put it under their arms. <laughs> uh, Cork, you very definitely remember that you got that in the room where they were doing con- research on the rat with the twig blights embedded into them, somehow you think that's probably not a not healing sure. spell. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's a good or remembering. Healing draft. That's a good remembering. Yeah. Right, let's not give that to them. Well, do we need... It's, uh, the, the, the fair, a fair weather friend, the bird, has is, is flown the coop to get us help. We should probably follow him as quickly as we can so that we can make this meetup before our friends here meet their untimely demise. Um, so as you are starting to, uh, is there any objection to that? I, I want to stop in the library. Okay. What do you want to do in the library? I, I just want to look for one thing that gets open with the key. Unless the key goes to the little chest that now is in my possession. Stand by. Stand by. Do, 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 do. Uh, okay, so the, the key opens a couple things. Number one, it opens some desks some cubby holes in the desk. Okay. Uh, and inside you find 365 gold and four agate gems worth about 20 gold each. Four agate, 20 gold. Yep. Um, the other thing it unlocks is the door. Did I say that? Not yet. They're good. Okay. The it door. unlocks the door. Um, and the last thing it unlocks is a, uh, drawer in the desk okay. that has a tome on druidic theories and the cycle of life and death, which is probably worth about 150 gold. Druidic theory? On the cycle of life and death. Cycle, life, death. And that's it. That's all you find in here. Okay. Um, and I will pocket it. <clears throat> And I will follow, as Leo said, um, with following the other. Now that I'm behind, I'll try to catch up. Leo, you're you're sending the bird out. You can see that the goblin ward is in, like, as you go up through the hole, there's no magic barrier, no problem for the bird to get out. Um, but you can see that the goblins are, like, spastic and, and rushing around. And as you go out the way that you're telling the bird to go, you see the cobalt quarter is also at arms and rushing around. And I want you to make me uh, an intelligence check. Straight intelligence, right? Yeah. For uh, 18. So... <clears throat> 
you know, you know that Zek is leading you out. You guys are going to have to go back through the Cobalt Ward to get out. Maybe, unless the goblins have some other way, but that's probably been destroyed by the Citadel Rising. Um, you kind of think to yourself as a stray thought, what are we going to tell the Cobalt or do about the Cobalt? That's it. Okay. So I'll, uh, I'll relay to Zach and I'll say, uh, as Teak is coming through, I'm, I'm realizing that the goblins and the kobolds are also very upset about whatever is going on with the Citadel at the moment. Um, but I believe that we may have also failed them with Meepo and we may need to address this as we leave. Let's, let's make haste. And we, I will also, I will turn to the rest of the group Mm -hmm. and I will share that same information. Um, and we'll start making our way back to the goblin ward. Yep. And you get to the goblin ward and, um, they're all running around and the, the, uh, throne chamber is empty currently when you guys climb up. Mm -hmm. Um, and Sharwin and Sir Bradford are able to climb up. I'll, I'll be at a little slower than you would like, but nobody's in there. Goblins are all rushing around like with their heads cut off. Uh, nobody seems to know who's in charge, what's going on, etc. You're able to make it through the goblin section without any any issue or anyone giving you really a second glance. Uh, what is your plan for the Cobalt Ward as you make the transition through the back rooms and start moving into the Cobalt Sector? We will tell them that it was I'm just going to remind you that you have a tree with the skull of the dragon in it. Well, we have a skull of the dragon. That is true. Are, I mean, you guys have lots of options. Do you want to try and sneak through in all the commotion? Do you want to try and talk your way through? We should, yeah, we should, we should try to get lost in the confusion and, and exit most hastily. It's my recommendation. I'm with Birdman on this one. Let's let's try to sneak out fast. Zach, you look like you had thoughts. Yeah, they're troubled. I mean, they they did want to deal originally, and with the us raising the citadel, we may have bargaining chips to get some of the items that they originally promised us, even if we didn't complete our end because. The person that they sent with us wasn't very much of a dragon handler. But we had two people dying, so you let's you just try to make our way out. You got to say something. Have we tried curing them or giving them potions? Um, We've tried giving them things that do restore their health, uh, but to no immediate effect to them. They did not feel any better for wear. Autumn, did you have an idea? Um, I have a spell called Pass Without a Trace, trace that we can use. Oh. What does it do? It basically it gives everybody a, sneaky. Yeah, it makes everyone in the party sneaky. Okay, let's do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's what is the bonus? I think it's plus ten to everyone's stealth check. Yes. Yeah. So let's have the party roll stealth and remember to add 10. Thirty-one. Thirty-five. Thirty-nine. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Twenty-seven, which I think puts me lowest. Yep. And uh, one second, I need to roll for Sir Bradford and Charwind. Uh, let me do both of them. Group check. Stealth. Stealth. Uh, 
15 and a 20, or sorry. Yeah. 15 and a 23. Uh, yeah, that's still way more successes than failures. Uh, you guys managed in the commotion to sneak out of the yeah. Citadel unseen. As, as we get out, I'm going to say to Zach, didn't the kobolds have something that required a key to open? <clears throat> A no, chest of some had, sort that we were promised. They had items that we were going to be able to choose from laid out on a dais, but we didn't complete our side of the of the contract. Yeah. What we were those items? About that. Uh, it was a scepter. A uh, one, one was a key yeah. to a door. Oh, there you go. That's where I was confused. There was a key to a dragon door, to be specific. Of them. It represented every hue of the dragons. But you make your way outside. Um, and then I'm going to have everyone make me a survival check. Woohoo! Oof. <laughs> <laughs> 14. Nice. Should I be? I, I guess I should have never asked if I should be at disadvantage, but my eyes are closed. Uh, not for this. You don't need to see. He's leading you. Uh, okay, 10. Okay. 14. Great. More successes than failure. Um, <clears throat> so the way this works is you, you get the bird there. You guys are all rushing. You've made it a quarter of the way back to town. In fact, I will... Uh-oh. I think I've got everybody there. Let me move everybody back to the Overland map. Players. Let me get my map situated. And then Get the stream map situated. There we go. And then get your map situated. So you guys make it, I'm going to use the spark as the uh, representation of you guys. You guys make it to about here when uh, the, when by the time that the bird arrives in Oakhurst. She gets the message. She reads it. She says, I don't have any more diamonds. I can't come. You'll have to bring them here and we'll have to try and figure something out. I used my last diamond on your friend. Bird's just going to tilt its head because unfortunately I love that it, like, it would be great if I could just actually speak through a crow, but you do yeah. need to actually pre-record it, which is like, yep. weird. Um, and so then I'll relay um, the information to Zach. We, that We have a diamond. We have a hundred gold piece diamond. Yeah, fantastic. So maybe we'll be able to heal one of them or cure one of them. I don't, I don't know if we have many other options, but we need to get them back post haste. Where it's no advantage to having them come to us. Okay. This magic lies beyond my means to cast. And so, <clears throat> roughly, just under a day later, um, question. Yeah, when we're about a quarter of the way out. Yep. Um, of of anywhere in the dungeon, was there any indication that there might have been like a gemstone in like the scepter or anything of that nature that would have been like reasonable to double back for at that point in time? No, that might make a difference. In okay, no. the the best chance you have is the diamond that you guys have in your possession. Um, by the time that you reach, uh, you know, just a couple hours. Uh, you're both having you're you're having to assist Sir Bradford and Sharwin. They're not able to 
uh, walk as easily as they did. Um, and by the time you make it into Oakhurst, which I will change the map again so that. Oh, nope. I got to put you guys on the map. Otherwise, it doesn't work. There we go. By the time you reach Oakhurst, um, and at this point, um, sorry, give me one second. Everyone gets 57 gold. Please annotate that. Carowin is waiting for you uh, at the temple to Paylor. Um, and you can see that uh, Dem or Corky, if you will, uh, is in kind of almost a heated discussion with uh, Carowin. And you guys arrive. Actions. They need help. They both look up and uh, Carowin has tears in her eyes. She rushes to Sharwin and helps her into the temple. Um, Sir Bradford is helped by Corky into the temple and Corky says, I don't have any more diamonds to cast greater restoration. I will pass the one diamond that we have. Is that okay? I look around the group. I owe her anyway. So. No, I... She says, which one do I save? How valuable must the diamond be? A hundred gold. Two diamonds of 50 would not do. Um, I have one. I don't even know if there's a place to go with this. I have one diamond worth 50 gold since it is my only possession worth any substantial amount besides my spell book, but I would give it up in a heartbeat. I appreciate that, but without... Do you, do you have two diamonds worth 50 gold? Just oh. the one. Okay. Me so those, did those you... sapphires of fifty gold would, would suffice. No, it it must be a diamond, and I must turn them to powder, which is yet another issue. And Carwin says I can take care of that. Will you use it to save Sharwin? I'm going to take the the paladin aside. Okay. And I'm going to whisper to him, are you right with your God? He says, there is no, and there is no other way to be. Sharwin should be the one healed. I'm the one that convinced them to go with me. What it's my any, fault. Do you have any last words? I will help Corky with the ritual. Okay. And I'll walk back with the Sir Bradford. And I'm going to like refuse that this is like going to go down this way. And I'm going to like run over to the mayor's office and like start banging on the door there and then go over to like the guard station and see if anybody has any diamonds and offer to buy them off of them. So <clears throat> make me a persuasion check. Yeah, Understanding there may not be 50 gold worth of diamonds inside of this town. I'm right. desperately running around the town. Understood. Uh, 19 plus something? Uh, no, 19. People push money into your hands because they want to help, but nobody has diamonds besides Corky, and she's out. And even Carowin says, I normally have some, but I'm we." We ship them off. I don't have any more, but I do have this. And she takes the hundred gold, um, the hundred 
gold's worth of diamond. And she actually has a device that turns it into powder rather quickly, a mechanical device. And she gives it to back to Corky. When, when you get back, Leo, Zach is going to be sitting outside with tears streaming down his face, just opening and closing the small box. It's packed to the brim with a hundred gold, and you can see him just staring off in the dis distance, almost praying the word diamond, and nothing is happening. Sir Bradford says, we need to hurry. And he begins to assist Corky in the casting of Greater Restoration. Carowin is very distraught as she watches her daughter go in and they close the door behind her as they start to spell. And they're in there for probably 25 minutes. And eventually the door opens and Charwin's skin has returned to normal. And she hugs her mother and Sir Bradford in the corner smiles up at Corky and says, I, I cannot feel Paylor's smile any longer. And his eyes go blank. And that is where we're going to end tonight's session. Thank you for joining us, everyone. As always, if you'd like to support us, you can do so on Twitch by clicking the subscribe button, becoming one of our rock stars. On YouTube, you can hit the like, subscribe, and of course, the bell icon to be notified whenever we upload new content, which is almost every single day of the week, Monday through Friday. And last but not least, you can head over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash gamersledge, where you can get your name on every single show that we do for as little as a dollar a month, just like the fine folks. You see we're scrolling across your screen right now for Eric, for Daniel, for Matt, for Lexi, for Lou, and for all of us. Did I forget somebody? Sean. And JR. And JR. Thank you. I'm not wow. looking at the screen. Sorry. Thanks for watching. And until next time, game on. Game, game on. on. I need you closer than ever, ever than before My life is wasted if I can't spend it all with you I've lived in total darkness, now you're my only light When you're away I feel like a shadow in the night Hold me, hold me, and look into my eyes. You'll be staying always by my side. I'll never let you go. No, I'll never let you go. You stay with me. I'll never. No, I'll never let you go. You stay with me until the end of time. I'll never let you go.
You're watching HMN.